And we are live. Okay. Cool. All right. Welcome to episode two of I'm a Professional, I Swear. I'm joined with Majin Taj. I say that right? Majin Taj? Yeah, like Majin Taj. Majin Taj, okay. Um, Yes, and we have webcams this time. (laughs) Last episode, there were some technical difficulties, so I had to do an audio only version. But I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. If you haven't checked it out already, link down in the description below. Um, but before we get started, go ahead and introduce yourself. What do you do? What do you like to do? Favorite anime, etc. Man, uh, well, I'm Majin Taj, as you already heard, and uh, I'm a content creator. I stream on Twitch. Uh, I sell feet pics on OnlyFans. You know, I just I do a little bit of everything. Uh, <laughs> favorite anime, <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's it's the best anime. Like I said, there's no there's no other answer to that. Uh, not even yeah. high school. Nope. High school of the dead. Not any high school, whatever title. No. <laughs> no. It's not better than Full Metal. Period. My next tattoo is going to be a Full Metal tattoo. Whenever oh, I dude, that's get badass. the hell up, go get it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, I said I'm an, I'm an open book, man. Anything, anything you want to know, just ask. Also, uh, if y'all were wondering why we look dead, we both woke up about an hour ago. And it's early. It's early. It's not I mean, early, but it's early. You know? <laughs> In the terms of a streamer, it's early. Oh yeah. Um, so <clears throat> when? Okay, when did you want to become um, a content creator or a streamer? All right. the The story of how I became a content creator. I never wanted to be one. Uh, honestly, before I like even started streaming, I didn't even really watch Twitch, which is weird. Um, so I graduated college in 2012 and, uh, I came back home. I was there for like five years and started working, you know, odd jobs. I I graduated with a biology degree and most, I think maybe only one of the jobs had anything to do with biology. And I hated that specific job for other reasons, but most of my jobs had nothing to do with my degree, as many people would tell you. And then um, come around the fall of like 2014, August, September time, I was unemployed. Um, it was like I said, between jobs and whatever, so nothing was really sticking. And Destiny had just came out, Destiny 1 came out September of 2014. And I was playing that a ton, like every day, all day. Um, looking i was still looking for jobs you know i was applying at that point in my life i was like i i don't want to work any more random jobs i only want to work something that has to do with my degree uh so i was applying at labs here and there never hearing anything back so playing destiny uh my son was uh he was about a little over one years old at the time he had a newborn and um around October, you know, I was playing with a, a certain group of guys I met like on Game Facts on a forum <laughs> when I used to be on Game Facts and we would raid all the time and then they were just like, yo, you know, why don't you why don't you try streaming in the meantime, you know it's, you, you're kind of funny, you have an interesting voice or whatever they said and I was like I'll look into it and then um, <clears throat> my birthday is in October and I, I told told my girl to like, you know, give me a give me a camera for my birthday, a Playstation camera she did started my first stream on uh october 22nd 2014 and, and it's just the rest is history man dude that's cool that's it. You, yeah. just, you basically they just told you why don't you try and you're like yeah okay why not yeah exactly was, I, I might as well do it i didn't i obviously think anything was going to come of it i really didn't realize how much money people made because again i wasn't into the streaming world i've always been into video games but i was just never on twitch for for whatever reason um, <clears throat> I watched like one person kind of regularly. It was a uh, one for one. He was a Smash player, really good Smash player. And uh, I love Smash and he just was really good at all the characters and he was always giving tips. I'll just watch him and like learn a bit, but I was never like invested into any stream or channel or Twitch in general before I, before I started. I knew like absolutely nothing about Twitch. It was, it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> That's great. So did you have any inspirations afterwards? Like anybody that inspired you to keep going? Um, 
as far as like on Twitch, you know, sure, there's there's always, you know, streamers you kind of look up to and learn from, um, <clears throat> you know, King Athalion, who is, you know, like the king of the Destiny community. Um, he, he always kind of helped me out and, and liked me and I saw his success and, you know, him being um, a, a family man also. So that kind of like made me think, you know, he, he was probably my first instance of someone that was kind of close into what I was doing in, in the same community. I was like, man, you know, he's he's doing it. He's doing this and he's making money. He's taking care of his family. Uh, so that was always cool. And then, you know, um, Lupo, same uh, Doctor Lupo? family man. Yeah, of course, Dr. Lupo. And he's, you know, he's doing, he was just doing his thing. He also came up in the Destiny community. I, I, we knew of him before he became like one of the biggest people on Twitch. But again, you know, as a family man, always about his, his wife and his kids. And he was just streaming and he made it happen for himself. And then you just, you know, I see those and it's like, you know, maybe I can get there. Uh, so. And you did. You know, <laughs> yeah. 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 You kind of did. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of ties into, so you have, you know, you always see people where they've gone in the same situation as you as a family man, um, having kids. How, okay, I want to touch on that real quick before we get into the next question. Yeah. How do you manage it with having kids and like your social life and then also streaming as much as you do? It's tough, man, to be honest, but I, I'm pretty lucky. First of all, I wouldn't even say I have a social life anymore. Twitch is probably my social life. <laughs> uh, just... You know, I, I feel like most content creators just sit at home all day, whether you're doing content creation or not. Uh, there's probably a few that go out. Um, I have a few friends still from high school and stuff that we'll meet every now and then. But uh, I have it fairly easy because, um, you know, Bianca, who's the mother of my kids, uh, that's her name, for those that didn't know, probably most of you listening, um, she also works from home. I work from home and she uh has an at-home daycare and you know right after my son was born she stopped working her job uh because the pregnancy was a little rough and then after that she just you know stayed home to care for him and started watching her friends kids and it just kind of grew from there um and she's very she's always been motherly so now that we have two kids i have a son that's seven and my daughter's three you know she has a daycare at home so they wake up we're both here you know, we're, we're all here all day. So they always have eyes on them. Um, it's not like, you know, I have to get up sometimes and check on them. I will, she has to go somewhere, but most of the time, like she's on it, you know, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. there's a daycare or if there's the bigger kids can, can keep an eye on them. So that's, that's afforded me a lot of liberty to, you know, just keep streaming at any, any and all hours, you know? So I'm definitely very, very lucky in that regard. That's cool. That is really cool. So, what is like the biggest reason you keep going though? Because I know a lot of streamers don't get to a certain point, and then they'll just kind of taper off, and you know, just like oh, man, it, yeah. I mean, I, I can, oh, dude. There's so many people I see they've been streaming for a long time, and they're such great creators, and they just stop. And I've always wondered, like, what is what is the motivation that keeps you going? It's tough, man. Just on, on that point, I know a lot of streamers, and myself included, that's like. You know, every day it's like, man, should I should I quit streaming? I'm not where I want to be, or is this is this the path I need to take? And it's because you know, there's no there's no stability in in just streaming. You don't have, especially you know, people with kids. There's no there's no health insurance plan that Twitch gives or anything like that. So right. you, it's kind of a gamble. You know, I mean, you can say the economy is bad everywhere for for various things, but not having those things in place for your future, the future of your kids, uh, can can be rough on a lot of people, and uh, it, it wears on you over time. But I know for me, even with that said, my kids are a big reason why I keep going, but for a different reason. Um, I don't know. Do you, what do you do for work, if you, if you say it on here, Wolfie? Hmm? Like, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm, I work in construction. Okay. So, Ooh, it's rough. <laughs> I applaud you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I work in I work in construction. And I used, I keep going because I haven't found a job or a career path that I actually enjoy. For. Right. Like I've never stuck to one thing for very long. Like, mm -hmm. I've been a construction worker. That would be a year. Uh, oh, no, a commercial electrician, I should say. Okay. I don't do a lot of big stuff. We just fuck with wires a lot. 
right uh, and pipe so much pipe oh my god <laughs> um, <laughs> so i keep going back to twitch and mm -hmm. content creation so that's what keeps me going because i know it's the only thing that i've been doing for the past six years that you enjoy that i enjoy and even though i go off and on a lot you know i know it's like this is my thing this is you right know, why i keep going and I, I definitely said, you know, it's like, it's your income, so you know, what are you doing for your kids? And I It's not even the income, though. That's why I was asking you what you do, oh. because, like, you know, I, I've worked, a, a, I haven't worked a lot of jobs, I will say that. I, I grew up playing sports, and it was all about sports. In college, I mean, in high school, I played football and track. I yeah, got a scholarship to go to college. Can't even really work. You have to sign something for the NCAA, and it's like, you know, at least for the majority of the year, you won't work and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, honestly, my first job was when I graduated at 22 at, at Best Buy. Um, but, you know, I guess I was working through sports my whole life, however you want to say it, and it paid off college. But so, I mean, you know, you, you go to your job and you're you're fucking there. Whether you like it or not, you're there. I, you know, I've worked in a factory. I've worked in a cubicle. It all fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know and i'm sure everyone basically feels that way um so then as as a streamer you know i make my own schedule i get up whenever i want uh which you know I'm doing. it's not very good advice for any aspiring streamers you should <laughs> set a schedule but i i'm just i have all the flexibility so you know my son is seven he just completed first grade um i get up and i take him to school Mm -hmm. I get up and I pick him up from school because, you know, she has kids here and people coming in, bringing their kids that she has to keep an eye on. When he has football practice or track practice, I can get up and take him. I don't have to worry about being at work or do I need to take this day off or whatever. All of his football games, I'm there. I'm not having to work weekends or travel, you know, depending on people's jobs. I just, it's, even if I feel like I'm not being as successful as I want to be monetarily, you also have to weigh it against the freedom that it gives, mm -hmm. especially when having kids. Because you know, if I if I get a job, then we have to rework everything. We got to figure out who's going to take them to school. If I can't, if I have to be at work, will she have to tell their kids that, or the parents that bring the kids that they can't bring them until later, which messes up their schedules and everything. So uh, that's that's probably the biggest factor that that keeps me going of course you know i want to be successful in it because i enjoy it i enjoy video games like most people but just having that freedom uh, i already know if i if i actually get a regular job that's that's gone I and mean, it's been like this for i don't know i've been streaming five and a half years now Damn. so it's uh yeah so your biggest your biggest motivation to sum it up is like the, the freedom that it allows you to have time with your kids and your family oh yeah definitely yeah, I mean, that's that's awesome that you can go to all the games. You don't even have to worry about, you know, that, oh, shit. I got, like you said, like, I have work. Right. You know, you can just be like, all right, cool. Sorry, chat, but uh, kids come first. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's, and I mean, a lot of streamers do it, but there's, you know, take like a, a week off. You know, you get burnt out or you're doing it a lot or maybe there's something's going on. And, you know, at the job, you have to go through all the fucking checks and balances and, and the ladder and be like, yo, can I have these days off? Can I request it? Streamer is just like, man, you know, sure, if you're not on, you're not making money, and that's that's the drawback, but you still have that ability and you don't have to ask anyone. It's just like, yo. Yeah. And it opens up a lot more opportunities, too, if you think about it, having that amount of free time and having a job that you, you know, you're your own boss. Right. A lot of it, you know, if you want to start another venture in something else to support it, like, yeah, um, definitely. You know, merch, whatever, you know, you, my brain is. <laughs> no, you're good. I mean, even as you say that, my uh, girlfriend, Bianca, she now she makes shirts and, and cups and other things. My cup isn't here. I'd show it on screen. Probably have, but like my merch, my personal merch, we make in house because hmm. she just. You know, she likes arts and crafts stuff, always has. And she bought one of those cricket machines, if anyone knows what that oh, is, where it cuts the vinyl. Be jealous. She, yeah, she's she has the heat press and she loves it, man. But even, you know, she's just doing it little by little. And now she's getting a ton of orders for like people local that have their own like 
cooking companies where they want shirts or this and that or like even you know the protests come up she'll make a black lives matter shirt and post it and everyone's like yo i want one and it's it's become a huge side business for her. so even you know like you said just having that time to do other things you know as, as a streamer you can get into twitch or you can make podcasts if you want to do other content creation and there's there's so many other things you can do in a time that you're not streaming and build yourself instead of you know the typical going to work and building a whole another company so yeah yeah i i can confirm having a full-time job and trying to be a content creator is probably yeah. one of the worst things i've ever experienced yeah. and see and my thing because everyone always asks you know when did you become full-time and i was like i just started that way <laughs> weirdly <laughs> enough uh i just i wasn't working at the time and i remember man when i first started streaming i was having fun i enjoyed streaming i, mean, I still have fun but it was new destiny was new i enjoyed the game back then and i was streaming for like 18 19 hours a day and it would just fly by like that i miss good old days. i would skip out on classes because i was in college when destiny dropped okay and i would skip out on classes yeah. just to grind Oh yeah, and the PvP, PvP because I was the asshole that would just use a shotgun in the melee. That was it. Warlock, <laughs> hey, that was, shotgun that was all you melee. needed. That's all I needed. Dude. That was all Watch you needed. Back then. And I remember, oh, the funny, the biggest memory I have of Destiny One was when you, I made, I was making montages at the time, and I used mm -hmm. um, Big Cheese. You, you know who Big Cheese Kit is? Yeah, we just yeah. Uh, did a podcast with the uh, with uh, Professor Broman. Oh shit! Okay, like, badass. I'm gonna have to that check that out. Yeah. But uh, his bacon, or his bacon, his song "Bacon." Mm -hmm. um, he he did this remix. I can't remember the lyrics right now, but it's like bacon and just how much he loves bacon. I did a remix to that for Destiny okay. One. Yeah, um, montage for Destiny One. It's my <clears> favorite <throat> thing I've ever made because it was just. Such you need to send me the link for that. I, I want to see it. The channel's gone. <laughs> I deleted uh, that channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can find it because uh, I know I reactivated this channel. Okay. Um, if I find it, I'll send it to you. Um, God, yeah, Destiny One, so so such a good game at first, and then I just kind of like I hate grinding. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it, it gets like that sometimes. So, who's your biggest supporter in all this? So, obviously, your girlfriend, I'm assuming, supports you when you're streaming. Is there anyone else, or is it just her? I mean. It, it's hard to say that it's just anyone, you know, especially to make it. Not that I've made it far by any means, at least by my own standards. I'm not anywhere where I want to be, but, you know, it, it's hard to make it anywhere without people that are supporting you either directly or indirectly. You know, Bianca was one of the first. I, like I said, I, we had a newborn. I wasn't working. I wasn't finding jobs and I wasn't just going to go get up and work at <clears throat> McDonald's or anywhere that didn't, I felt like didn't suit me anymore. And so, you know, at that time, <laughs> you know, think about it. We have we have a one year old run a one bedroom apartment and I'm sitting here playing video games all day on the Internet. You know, back then, you're not making any money. You know, there was no affiliate program, so you had to be partnered and just fill out applications and not hearing nothing and, and playing video games. I'm sure that was uh, that was probably not very good for her, even though she didn't really speak her mind. But um it, you know, it's definitely her, but then you meet so many people along the way from all over the world. And it's just, it's crazy. You know, I have, there's just so many people that come in day by day or that help me with things, um, help me with my social media. People will find opportunities for me. Like, hey, you know, there's this competition going on that I wouldn't have known about if they didn't bring it to my attention. Uh, man, my biggest monetary supporter, my, my biggest donator, or actually the person who's donated the most money since I've started streaming according to like the Streamlab stuff is, is a dude who lives in Norway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just, there, there's so many moving parts and people all over the place that that make any content creator who they are. And uh, that, that support is, is priceless. None of us would be anything without them, so. Yeah, Chad is, um, <clears throat> Chad is a powerful beast. Oh I mean, yeah. They built my PC. Literally. Yeah, exactly. You get it. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, okay, I have these parts, and everyone's like, I have this part, I have this part, I have this part, and I'm like, all right, bet, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So, that's awesome. Um, so is it as rewarding as you thought it would be? Like when you first started, compared to what you think you could do versus now, what you think you can do? That's a weird question for me because again, I didn't 
think anything of it when I first started. I, I didn't go in with a plan, nothing. <laughs> you know, I just, I didn't know what streaming was. I just was on camera and I was talking shit and playing Destiny. Uh, but now, you know, again, seeing seeing the success of other people and the, some of the things I've gotten to do, it's 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 incredibly rewarding, man. It's uh, a lot of times it's tough, but then a lot of times it's it's fulfilling. One of the main things I would say is the St. Jude. You know, a lot of people raise money for St. Jude, especially if you're in the Destiny community. We've always done it, and you know, I've been lucky enough to go out to the St. Jude Summit about I think like three times now, two or three times, and um. They they take us out to, to Memphis where the St. Jude facility is and we walk around and we tour it and we see all the things that they do and we get to interact with some of the kids. Uh, obviously not the ones who are like, you know, really, really sick, but you know, just uh, it's always just crazy, you know, because we're sitting here playing games and then you know, just, just something so, so fucking terrible as like childhood cancer and, and just, you know, all those kids that don't get a chance, but then you know, you see this organization in St. Jude that, you know, we're, we're all raising money towards and then you get to see kids and, and their families and the facilities and the things that they do and, you know, all the, you know, you read about all the kids that they save uh, and, and cure cancer from and, you know, things like their research, they don't, they don't hold their research hostage from the world, you know what I'm saying, it's free to anyone, which a lot of scientific places don't do. If you know anything about the science world. Um, They're and, papers. Right, you know, you, you, have to have, you have to pay to get access to research, which could help, you know, in many different fields. It's weird, but you know, yeah, I learned that shit when I was in college. Um, but so, you know, just things like that, knowing that that's what we, we work towards and, and how it really affects the world and people's lives is, is super fulfilling. Um, that's just one of the, the big ones, but you know, of course there's there's other ways just man a lot of the people i've i've met that i would have never met otherwise like said from all over the world and you know you see because i've been streaming it'll be six years this october i started in 2014 and man you know six years i've seen weddings and divorces and deaths births of family people graduating high school and college and and you know you just through through video games and through a screen and talking to people you really become part of their lives and they become part of mine uh, over time and it's just it's crazy. It, it, it is it's, it's kind of weird <laughs> when you think like, about it but you see yeah. people go through school like i have a mod who i met when he was must have been middle school or high school yeah. and you know now he's like in college and i'm just like i had an image of like you know a 13 year old kid throughout the years the whole time, Fuck. right? They don't age in your head. <laughs> Fuck. And then I, yeah. I saw him because we were in a vo video chat for the first time, and I'm like, "You, you are not what I had pictured in my head. You, you are too tall and too old exactly. looking." <laughs> oh wait, you've been around forever. It's, yeah, it's I have a. There's a guy. His birthday was just the other day. I think like yesterday, two days ago. I think he just turned twenty, and uh, he first came to my stream. He was like fifteen, you know, freshman in high school. You, know, you can even see like their their growth as a person and the way they type or the things the they say things they're interested in yeah and it's <laughs> it's it's kind of funny but yeah man it's it's definitely that's that's part of the fulfilling end too I, I feel like anyway it's just having those connections with people so yeah you, you grew to see the rewards even though you didn't know what was going to come and oh yeah they're awesome so do you think this is for people who are looking to get into it. Do you think anyone can do it? Or do you think, not just streaming, like content creation in general, do you think anyone can be a content creator? Or do you have to have a certain mindset for it? Uh, I definitely do think anyone can do it. And I think anyone can be successful, but it's not really, it's definitely not easy by any means. Um, you know, you have to, well, first there's a market for everything. So they say, you know, so even, you know, you talk to a lot of people and they're like, oh, I can't stream. I'm not funny or I'm not this, or I yell too much. I'm like, there's, I can show you a lot of streamers that fit that mold and are successful. You know, not every successful streamer is 
great at the games they play or is funny. Some of them rage all the time and people love it. So you can find an audience for just about anything that you are or, or want to be, even if you want to play a character like Dr. Disrespect. Um, but the hard part is, is finding that audience, getting your content to that audience uh, so they can know that you even exist. Because how are they going to watch you if they don't know you exist? And then if you're smaller, getting <clears throat> getting your content to where people can see it is is the is the biggest struggle. You can sit there and stream on Twitch all day, but no one's going to find you because Twitch doesn't have any visibility and they don't have any algorithms set up to make you more visible like YouTube would. So we had uh, a conversation about that on the last podcast where mm-hmm. it was not everyone can be good at it, but you can still do it you just have to be able to either a fake until you make it or you need and i mean if you're gonna fake being on twitch like your personality you have to be really good at it yeah you gotta you gotta um, really stick to that shit but that's another thing too is growth is a lot of people will think that they they can't do it because they're not growing but you have to realize in today's market you can't grow on a singular platform you have to right. you know spread out or get extremely have. lucky yeah extremely and, lucky there was um oh, Davin Nash, you know who that is? Yeah, I watch his videos. Okay, cool. and then uh, hell, that other white guy. <laughs> uh, that, Harris. Can't oh, think of his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alpha Gaming. Alpha Gaming. Yeah, Alpha. That's right. They're they're uh, they're very informative. I, I like a lot of things they say. Yeah, yeah, and I think they had this anal- um, this this example where you had a bucket and you had two buckets, and it was like. Okay, you're putting in time and content into one bucket and that's your your brand bucket but you're not putting mm-hmm. any time or effort into your marketing bucket so right. as your content builds up you have all this great content but the only thing left in there is luck mm-hmm. and you have nothing else in that other bucket to actually help feed you know the guarantee of a retweet or the guarantee of a, a view you, have, you didn't put anything in there so you have to I would say put it this way: you have a hub, and that's your Twitch, and then you have to have like different trains trains coming to your Twitch from different yeah. sources, like a train right. station. That's um, a very good analogy, actually. I, I can't believe I came up with that uh, yeah. in my head. I'm just like, how do I say this? Nah, that's, that's you, need to, you need to write that one out and put your name on it. <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna write an ebook and uh, how to become a streamer, and I'm not even successful yet. <laughs> hey, um, fuck it. But People I mean, will buy it. No, I would say, I and then that could be another train. To be honest, people see the book and they're like, "Man, this guy's making sense. This I mean, guy makes sense." Ride the train to his motherfucking station, and it's like, yeah. "Hi, <laughs> welcome." He's got to put you out there. Um, so what what is your biggest drawback when it came to streaming? What was the big challenging moment, and how did you overcome it? <laughs> Man, I don't even know. Too many to count. Probably. Yeah, I'm a terrible streamer. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Like I am, I've I've made it to where I am, wherever you feel, uh, anyone would feel where I am, the level I am is successful or not, because you know it's always varying degrees and perspective. Um, by luck, sheer luck, I don't I don't do anything that a streamer is supposed to do. I my social media presence sucks. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I'm not gonna say yeah, I hardly post. You know that you need to post on Twitter more. You should be on Instagram, putting your gameplay clips on Instagram, all this stuff. So People saying you can use TikTok now, YouTube. I don't fucking post on YouTube. I don't take pictures. I hate Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so on and so forth, man. Uh, so I don't. I don't. Everyone, you know, you should have a schedule. So people know you go live. I've never, literally, never had a schedule. I've never set out a schedule in, in almost six years. Um, I, I'm I'm a terrible streamer. I just got lucky, and that's that's what it's all about. You know, a lot of people uh, partnership is the goal, right? It's it's an easy goal. It's set for you because things change when you get there. So it's, that's a goal for a lot of people. And uh, I get there. I got lucky. I got partnered. I started in October of 2014, and I got partnered in February of 2015. It took like four months. Um, I was just in the right place at the right time. Destiny just came out. Uh, so it was a lot of eyes were on a new game. So there was a lot of new content I was helping with like raids and, and trials and stuff. I was funny. Maybe being black helped me. 
who knows? Uh, I was also streaming from my PlayStation, which was like a different. I don't, I don't know if you know. That's where I started. Works. So, yeah, because PlayStation, if you're on viewing on PlayStation and you go to the Twitch app, it's only only people on PlayStation, only. right? So my numbers were inflated because of that. And this was back when you I think now it's you know 75 concurrent viewers, or whatever. Back then you had to have 500 to get partnered. And again, there was no affiliate program. It's like 100, and, it's 200, yeah. And then you had to get that for no, three months. No, it was five. When, was when five. I got partnered, it was five. Holy for sure. fuck. Yeah, you had to have 500. And, you know, give or take, you know, 450, they'd probably, you know, fuck with you. But 500 was the number. And uh, I was holding that, again, because of just luck, man. Everything, I was just in the right place at the right time. It was literally nothing that I did. You know, people like, oh, you know, don't discredit yourself. You're funny or you played the games. Fuck all that. It was nothing I did <laughs> to really deserve that. Because there's so many people who were who've been grinding before that that you know didn't make it. I just I got lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. I'll, I'll never say anything otherwise. Uh, and so, I got partnered. Quit. You know? Was there any like you know behind the screen things that made you want to like con consider leaving Twitch or anything like mental health or anything like that that you had to overcome? Me? No. No, um, I'm I'm very. I don't even know the word. I don't really give a fuck about things. Very uh, <laughs> you know, Yeah, I just people, you know, you come in and be like you know, every black content creator has to deal with it. I'm sure other minorities do in their own way too, and women, of course. But you know, coming people call you the N word, I'm like, okay, you know, that's that's the best you got in in this day and age. <laughs> move on man like you know some people really gets to them but it's just it, most things don't bother me like i just i don't know i guess i see life differently i don't think i'm special or anything but so no 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 real, no real mental challenges. health things that kept me from from streaming you know i'm not gonna sit here and say i'm impervious to fucking mental health issues i i have my days as, as everyone else does but you know it's, it's always the next day man you just brush it off and, and move on whatever it is that's the only thing that's, there's always next stream right and that's not to discredit people with you know actual like chemical imbalances and things that are out of their their hands i'm not trying to you know if anyone listens to this and tries to fucking take what i say and and, and twist it around but just, just for me it's, it's whatever man we're just playing games on the internet things don't have to be so serious yeah and um that's cool. And, and I mean, I, I would add to just from watching your streams, you have a very good intention on on Twitch. You, you can say you're lucky all you want, but the fact of the matter is you have very good retention. You know, people come in, you interact with them, you have a good time. I mean, I listened I to, to a whole ass argument over bananas and other food items and which is better, which is not. That was the funniest <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yo, man, I don't, I've never heard of anyone not liking bananas except for him in my entire life. Like, who doesn't like bananas? Bananas are fucking delicious. Yeah, bananas are good <laughs> for you. They're delicious. They make everything else better. It, they really do. He's, he's tripping. Yeah, he is. <laughs> it was, and it was, it was great because, like, it would, it would start to lull and then someone would throw in another food and it would just kept Ooh. going. I think it was going on for like 40 minutes. It was and, a while, man. Yeah, <laughs> and then y'all ended up like, I think we played to like two games throughout that. And I mm -hmm. wasn't even watching the gameplay. And right. While you guys were getting shot and down, it was like, hey, I'm down. Also, by the way, bananas suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So, to credit you, to where credit is, so you do have very good retention. So, thank you. We just need to work on your social media. We'll, we'll, we'll get you up there. We'll get you. I need to work. I need to work on a lot of stuff. I need a schedule. <laughs> I, I probably need a better camera, need better equipment. I, I mean, I wouldn't say. Actually, I guess I don't know. The whole, no, whole thing about scheduling. I don't camera know wise, oh, schedule. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, camera. I, I feel you there. I mean, no, I my know, camera's like, ass. Dead out. <laughs> <laughs> Dead out. Mine, mine's fucking trash. But no, I feel you there. And then also like staying on schedule with something new content or like when I, for example, when I went to YouTube, trying to stay on the YouTube schedule was <clears throat> it's it's rough. And I get why a lot of creators are just like, fuck it, because it's like, you're so drained from streaming afterwards. Like, it's a good drain, but you're so drained. It's like going to a gym. Not that I would know what that's like. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Who my job it? is my gym. 
One second. Very good. Okay, Tosh, close the door. That's my son. That's cute. Um, yeah, but no, like trying to post on all the social medias is, is it's hard. But I think once you get into the groove of it, it's pretty. It's it's tough, man. And you know, to even go back to um, Devin Harris. I hope I got his name right. Devin and uh, Alpha Gaming. Alpha Gaming is the, the specific channel this time. Um, but you know, if if you watch him, he he says in a lot of his videos, and he talks about um, his editor, whose name I can't remember. Um, but the guy is the guy that edits all of his videos for him. And you know, he has one video where he talked about the investment. Like he he liked what he did, and he at first he would pay him to edit his YouTube videos when he wasn't even making as much on his video. So he was kind of doing it at a loss, but he understood the value of it. And I think that goes into what you're saying here with social media. I, I'm i kind of trying to start to work with an editing team, uh, just a group of guys, and they've made one video for me. I posted on Twitter yesterday. Um, they just took my clips and it's, it's for promotional reasons, but still they made it. And having, having as many, having a team around you is super important. I really think a lot of bigger streamers do definitely have a team around them. Uh, that will do different things because you can't it, it's hard to do it all yourself it's hard to do the content and edit it and then be on social media and you know go here and do this and do that so having people especially i would say an editor is it seems to be super huge if they're good you know that that's gonna boost your social media presence easy because they're making good content that you probably i can't make i don't know how to fucking edit i have no editing skills um of course, I can learn, but it's, again, it's it's the time versus versus the money, and then what's the reward? If I learn, I have to spend time learning it. Then I have to spend time editing, where I can maybe pay someone some they can edit it for me, which will hopefully then drive more people and give me more money to do other things, which is what you know Alpha Gaming did and, and talked about. And again, uh, people holding you accountable schedules. I used to have someone that really helped me with my social media. Uh, understanding the analytics and stuff and i was doing really good at that time so uh, yeah. <laughs> having having people around you that that know more than you and especially are willing to help you is is, is going to help a lot no I, I feel that i was looking into getting to getting an editor because i mean i know how to edit i've been that's what i went to school for but it's i don't like doing it <laughs> right <laughs> if I'm it's honest, time consuming man I've, I've edited a montage and it's not very good it was probably like three years length of a song. It took me like two weeks. Like, mm -hmm. Fuck do people do this? <laughs> this shit is hard. Well, like you, you eventually after a while, like you'll pick up presets and stuff like that. Like right, and then you'll understand. Because me, I'm like, okay, what does this tool do? And I gotta, you know, YouTube it or you search in. And then once you do it, you'll you'll know where everything is. You can do it quicker. But still, man, it's yeah. It, 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 dude, okay, just the podcast first episode. It took me a week because my PC broke due to my own stupidity. Um, I didn't slot in the RAM all the way, and Damn. I thought it was a graphics card, so we got a new graphics card, thanks to chat. And then uh, <laughs> turns out, out it was just the RAM, so I used my old graphics card. And now I have this 1050 Ti just chilling here for no reason. <laughs> 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 but then like, I would so like, okay, cool. So I started processing it, I edited the whole thing, listened to the whole thing, put in the graphics and the effects and all that. And then I went to go process it. I kept crashing. Like my, my PC would just freeze. Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So I, I take it apart, look at it, nothing. Okay. Take it to my girl's PC because we built her an AMD Threadripper, like a $2,000 mm -hmm. PC. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So it processed it like that. Right. I go back to my PC and I'm playing games on it. It freezes again. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, I didn't slot in the other RAM. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Twice. It's fucking up. Yeah, and then that, after that part, I was like, I don't even want to. I don't even want to look at this edit. I'm not gonna review it. I'm just gonna upload it because I am so frustrated with editing. Yeah. Um, no. See that? Yeah. No. I'm sorry. I'm I'm having like nightmares right now about. Yeah, you good? Session. Work through it. Let's, let's move through it. Let's, let's move on. So, what is the moment where you said, "I can do this full time"? Like, what 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 happened where you're saying, "Okay, fuck getting a different job. I'm doing this." there wasn't one which is bad you know a lot of people 
like I said, I, I, I'm not your typical streamer. I did everything wrong and got lucky still. Um, mo most people would be like, all right, you know, I'm working a part-time job or a full-time job and I'm streaming. Now streaming is bringing me this amount of money. I can stand to lose whatever I get from my job or the freedom or more time to put into streaming and maybe gain this much. You know, they have all these mm -hmm. thoughts and, and analytical shits about it. I was streaming. No one was answering my fucking emails or, or my um, applications to jobs. Mostly because, again, you know, I was applying at um, scientific places, labs and stuff, and I had no experience because I was working at fucking Chase before and Best Buy and this insurance place, right? Mm -hmm. So why the fuck would they hire me? Everyone wants experience. No one wants to give experience. We all know that fucking conundrum. Yeah. Um, but then I got partnered quickly, and I was just like, man, let's see where this goes. I, I feel like if, if I had any point in time where it was like that 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 was the time I, I made this partnership i did it quickly it must be cool you know i, I thought i was a shit back then i was a fucking idiot because <laughs> <laughs> things I things changed that. on my end and <clears throat> i've never been back to that amount of viewers never um but i just i just kind of dove right in from the very first day of streaming i was technically a full-time streamer cool that's that's really cool um, so was it just like, you know, you mentioned that you never had those viewers again, but would you think that was just more of like a game specific thing? If you were to go back to destiny, would that happen again? Or destiny? Two? No, it was, um, <clears throat> cause I, I played destiny one throughout its life. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, so what happened was, uh, I got partnered that February and that's right around tax season. You know, we had a kid. <laughs> you a shit ton of money for taxes. I was balling. Yeah. Uh, I bought my first PC, and then a little bit after that, because uh, I was streaming from you know PlayStation, so I kept streaming PlayStation for a bit, like maybe a few weeks after I, I bought my PC. But I could do more stuff with streams. I had a PC, and then the disc drive on my PlayStation died. Could not play Destiny anymore. Or, I mean, I, I'd have to, like, rebuy it, I guess, digitally, which probably would have made sense back then. But again, I don't do anything right. Um, so I was like, man, I got this new PC. Let's play PC games. Can't play Destiny. Let's try something new. That was a fucking mistake. <laughs> I think soon after that, I started playing fucking Ark Survival. You know, the dinosaur game. I which, game. I like it. I think it's fun. Oh, it's a great game. I just suck at it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough, man. I used to get my ass whipped a lot. But, you know, you got to kind of think about my viewer base was Destiny, first person shooter, fast pace, you know, helping people. I was, I was doing a lot of helping through raids and trials of what we call a service stream, which is a whole fucking discussion itself. The service streams are, are a double edged sword. Um, and, you know, this is the reason why, because once you stop doing that service, once I stopped being able to help with raids and stuff, which a lot of people were there for, they don't come back and find another stream that's doing it. Um, so anyway, I started playing Ark. It's not a very, you know, the, the viewers of both games don't really mix well. Very few people like both. Um, and that just kind of, you know, killed all of my momentum. Momentum is a big thing. And, uh, and I started playing other PC games. H1Z1, when it came out, was popular and, and so on and so forth. I just kind of went the PC route. You know, I still played Destiny every now and then. I got my PlayStation fixed after a few months. But uh, then I kept playing other shit because I like all types of games, you know. I, I never wanted to kind of stick to one game anyway. But I just never gotten back up to that point. Damn. Well, I mean, I'm sure you will. Trust me. It's... One day. Maybe I won't. It's life. Why are you growling at? <laughs> I'm sorry, my dog is growling at. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Um, so, <clears throat> if you could go back and start again, knowing everything you know now, what would you do different? Shit. Everything. <laughs> because again, I'm not doing anything <laughs> right. <laughs> um, man, well, I keep playing Destiny. But <laughs> just uh, as, as a general thing, I'd, I'd network more. Uh, that's huge, working with other content creators. Um, you know, again, talking about your train analogy, um, 
when you when you work with other content creators, it's more like you taking a, a train into their hub, and then you know the the viewership that they've built can get a taste of you, and, and if they like you and whatever. And was, I've seen a ton of crossover from you know I've I've had I have viewers of mine that used to watch another streamer but now they more so watch me and i've had viewers that used to watch me all the time and now they watch i hardly see them and they watch other people you know when i go in the chats i'll see them and stuff because you know you never really know who you're gonna really click with or, or resonate with more and it's just you know the nature of it a lot of people don't like that and they'll think it's bad but it is what it is i'm glad my people have found someone that, that they really like yeah. for whatever reason I mean, um, it's content you, know, you enjoy what content right. you enjoy but i mean that's part of getting yourself out there you, you know you gotta working with other content creators uh boosts both of y'all's visibility and it also i mean just helps the content in general i know when i first started uh again i didn't know anything about twitch like at all i didn't understand twitch space etiquette none of that and you know you always see i started trying to watch streams a couple weeks after i started and people were like why are you coming in here posting you know your stream we're talking about stream get out of here and they'll ban them and which you know is, is the right thing to do because you're self-advertising in, in, in other people's streams you know but i just took that as man streamers don't fuck with each other <laughs> like <laughs> so it's everyone for themselves in a way so i didn't play with fucking anyone hardly for a long time it was just i just fucking just did whatever i did uh and it took me a while to learn and see that you know a lot of the um bigger and more successful ones are typically always playing with other people or set group of other streamers and you know that just kind of helps everyone grow so yeah. I, I would definitely say networking would be something that i would probably start right away i still suck at that i don't even network very much i, I hardly play with other streamers <laughs> dude i feel like you know i had just been breaking out of my shell to network with other people it's tough, man. It is. It's, it's nerve-wracking because I don't want someone to think, oh, he's just doing this for the views. And I was like, no, exactly. I just want more friends. <laughs> and right. Talk to more people in this industry because I've been here for six years. It's, um, it's, it's hard. And, it's hard all around. And Myron Plague said, apply for everything. <laughs> like, that's that's his motto. It's just full send. Ask people to collaborate. Yeah. Oh, okay, as long as they're in, you know, everything's within your, your I don't want to say bubble. Don't just no, you're, you're not going to like. Right. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't apply to or go to like a, a chess streamer, and you only play FPS games. And say, hey, let's collab in FPS, <laughs> right? You know. Or I also say, you know, stay stay within your means, like yeah, your your viewer range. Your Doctor Lupo's not gonna and, come on my podcast. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's kind of you know maybe when you build it up and you get some viewers and you maybe get some other people and you can get Doctor Lupo, but you're not gonna start out with Doctor Lupo. But hey, you know, and it's the same yeah. for me. I, he has thousands of viewers every day no matter what and i have 30 to 50 it's not feasible for me to be like yo you know lupo play with me i don't have anything to offer him in yeah. a sense um granted you know if he reached out then okay you know that's that's on him because yeah. he's but for for him, most people you know don't don't go too high above your pay grade i guess you just... <laughs> now when it comes to like applying for industry jobs or industry opportunities i always say and admire place it as well just just send it like you know yeah, all your, all it's, it's gonna happen is a no yeah. definitely um, get as many of those as you can man just... dude yeah i don't i don't know if i told no i, I told my place the story of how i i applied for omen it was the most nerve-wracking thing in the world i had never done anything like it before like all the organizations i've been a part of before mm -hmm. came to me so i've always right. had to like before i always had that mentality okay when i'm feasible they'll come to me right right you know, and i was just like i'll apply most nerve-wracking experience in my life but like the best you know it's like oh i did it and then i started doing more i applied for other jobs yeah I sat down. One, so if, if to the viewers if, if you think you don't want to you can't do it just just do it and then once right. you do it it'll become more comfortable you'll do it again and again and again and then eventually you're gonna land on something and it's gonna be a really dope experience um but yeah apply for everything that's that's i'm mean, gonna keep saying that probably in every podcast that's <laughs> yeah, i mean i agree yeah <laughs> apply for everything you have nothing to lose if you you know you always got to weigh the the risk versus reward for everything in life you do it subconsciously all the time mm -hmm. uh but 
you know, with that, the, the risk is being told no. And if you can handle the no, which you know, hopefully you can, why wouldn't you apply? And, and the reward is you know, a bunch of, I'm sorry, probably free shit, <laughs> you know, computers or whatever, whatever you're applying for. So mm -hmm. apply for everything you can. And then you make connections along the way, you know. Yeah. If and I had an applied, I wouldn't have met you because I came to your stream because I was doing research. <laughs> I was okay. like, who's part of the Omen squad? Omen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and like, honestly, I mean, Omen, Omen reached out to me. I, because again, I don't do anything right, so I don't reach out to any companies typically. I just fucking stream, and they they just DM me, and I was like, I remember it too. <clears throat> Shout out Omen, first of all. Yeah. Great, yeah. great people, great company. They've been holding it down. But uh, man, they just fucking DM me on Twitter. And you know, in, in this stuff, there's always people that are trying to, you know, you'll get a lot of DM and they're like, hey, you know, do you want an overlay or do you want to do this? And it's, it's it's never, most of the time it's like not from anything or someone that's serious or, or is well established. You know, mm -hmm. but people just shooting themselves in, in the dark. So I read it, it's this long thing like, hey, we've been watching you, we like you. I'm like, all right, this already sounds like some bullshit. Uh, <laughs> well, no one liked me and I doubt you've been watching me. I ain't never seen you, but I looked. I was like, okay, let's see. And I looked at their, their Twitter page and like 90 something thousand followers. I was like, oh, they might be legit. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, they're owned by HP. They might be legit. Right. I was like, oh, okay. Because, you know, anyone could just be named Omen or whatever. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't be knowing shit. And uh, so then I did a little bit of research. I was like, okay. There, it just seems like their actual account and stuff, and, and I, I replied back, and you know the rest is history. But that's just, <laughs> that's crazy, man. That's awesome, uh, and I mean they they had a smart choice, like and with every all the creators too, dude. Like <clears throat> it, we got some we got some good people, man. I'm I'm very grateful and lucky again. I mean that's probably the big takeaway here. Luck. I've been extremely lucky. When people usually ask me, you know. <laughs> how do you make it on Twitch or how do you do this? And my biggest thing is luck, man. You can, yeah, I've seen so many people who work their ass off who I think are some of the best content creators and they're not anywhere near some of the best content creators who I watch. I'm like, yeah. You can see that. Um, by me teach their own. I think the biggest thing is just don't give up because 80, 85%. 90% of the people are going to give up and then you're still there. Yeah. The viewership doesn't go away. <laughs> you know, it's still there. You just got to grab them. Right. <laughs> and I mean, that's what part of luck is. Luck is, you know, it's being, they typically define it as being in the right place at the right time and being prepared for it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You'll never know when that time is going to come, that opportunity. And then when it does, are you prepared to capitalize on it? And you can't, you know, if you quit early, you know, you never know when that time is going to come. It may not come, you know, if we're completely honest, but it might. So you just got to fucking... You got to have fun doing it. Yeah, you keep going. And it might happen one day. Seize those opportunities. So here's an interesting question. Since you're so chill and relaxed about it, <clears> and <throat> probably very lucky. I mean, what, what leprechaun did you steal? He needs to go back <laughs> to his family. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I knew. I need him to come back. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to escape right now. We gotta go capture him. <laughs> so, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't even know. I don't even think about it. I don't think about it in, in the sense of like streaming or career wise. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of days, like I said earlier, some days you just feel like, man, do I need to stop streaming? Do I need to get a, a real job and, and get those benefits for my family and stuff? Um, so hell, I could be working some random job where I can maybe finally get a job with my degree in a lab somewhere, or I could become a bigger streamer, or maybe I get into the gaming industry with some company. There's, I, I don't even know, man. Honestly, when I think about it, it's, it's more so like five years, my son is going to be 12 years old. You know, I think about it like that more than okay. like, I'm not a 12 year old. What is he going to be like? What is interest going to be? Um, all I can hope for is that I'm there for for my kids in in the best capacity that I can be in, whether no matter what I'm doing for work, you know. Uh, I, I hope that answers it. That's a dope answer. <laughs> so, what what would you say is, from everything that you've learned through the years, 
What is your biggest piece of advice? Man, there's there's so many, but if we just you can name one, a few. I mean, the biggest thing, man, is just do it. If you want to stream, if you're out there and you want to do content, fucking do it. Like no one, no one who is blown up thought that they were gonna be where they were when they started. That is true. Yeah. And it's you know, I'm sure like we talk about Lupo a lot lately. You know, I'm sure Lupo never thought he'd have. 20,000 subs <clears throat> the first day he went live even you know when I knew him and he had like 200 viewers and he was on Destiny 1 playing with a mouse and a keyboard that was his thing when you know it was only on console and, and uh, you could ask him then I'm sure you never would think that he'd be where he is you know it's just you know, like I said we've been talking about luck a lot but you're not going to get lucky if you don't do it just do it if you're thinking about doing it do it Take take the experience take yes. all that you'll learn from it whether it's good or bad you know you might stream <clears throat> and get three viewers for a whole year and you're not gonna like it and you know but you and it sounds so cliche but at least you tried you know you did it you just you, you never know what can happen in life just do it not sponsored that's, by that's nike. all you gotta do right there you go <laughs> and to anyone out there that says nike no it's nike oh, no. who the hell says them people in england they say nike oh no I mean, that is technically the correct way to pronounce it. Mm -mm. No, it's not. But as an American Nike. company in America, it's Nike. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> like Adidas. People say Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. I don't know about that one. Oh, you know. So if you were streaming, you were a content creator, you would want to be... I don't know. Do I sound weird? Because you sound weird. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, sounds like really robotic right now. Uh, I'm trying to think of a way that I can get you to hear it. I'm sure you can just edit it out. So, it's good. You did say editing so you can chop it up if you need it can but you uh it better say something hello now you sound better okay um, what happened <laughs> that's weird that's that's razor mic for you it does i mean i think it's not the razor mic specifically it's i dropped it a few times mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did i sound weird at all no no you you, you okay. sounded perfect this whole time so uh, okay. i think we're good nothing i can't fix in post right yeah, right, right. Go ahead and ask the question back again. You can, um, yeah. So you, you mentioned that if you weren't doing this, you would probably be working in a lab with your biology degree. Uh, what specifically would you want to work on if you could work on anything? Man, that's a tough one. Uh, I love science. I always have. Even now, uh, like <laughs> if you look at like my YouTube history or suggestions, it's all it's almost always something like science or history where I'm just you know kind of learning something. I've always kind of enjoyed learning. Um, I don't know, man. If I had my way, if I could just do whatever or anything, uh, I'd, I'd like to be like a part of, you know, even if it's a small part of some type of research that's like on on the like it's really breaking ground for for humanity in some way. Like, I guess a, a good example for anyone that would know, like. Um, <clears throat> the Human Genome Project, which was obviously a huge thing where we finally sequenced all of the DNA of, of humans, all three billion pace pairs, and went on to sequence a bunch of other animals after that. But that took like, you know, 13 years. I think it ended in 2004 or something off the top of my head. Uh, a lot of great scientists were there, but, you know, just I, I can't imagine the 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 feeling of all those years of research where you, you know we're finally you know we understand dna we know that it codes for everything but now we can see exactly how many and how they work and and all just the whole you know whole genome of, of humans it's, it's it's you know i love that stuff so to me you know it's mind-blowing um oh yeah i remember um researching it for a project in school and yeah 
how the my the thing that be that blows my mind with it is that how do they know to splice like i can't remember any of the terms right now but how they take things apart and how they just know to go here right and just do it great. and it's like fucking cool <laughs> But we, we have so many applications now because of that. You know what I mean? Fucking like the Ancestry.com or, you know, we understand viruses and, and bacteria a lot better and CRISPR, which can go in and cut genes. Now we know how to cut genes and insert genes and, you know, genetically modify things better, no matter how you feel about GMOs. Uh, and, you know, it all basically kind of stemmed from that. And again, just if, if I could have been on something like that or, or something like that in the future, I think that would probably be where, where I'd, I'd be like really fulfilled just to be a part of something like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I've always been super interested by GMOs. So I'm sorry to anyone watching who's misinformed by that stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of bad information about, about what GMOs are and how they work. That's a whole nother talk. I mean, that's just the easy way to put it in perspective for people is think of it as coding a computer. You can do great things with it, and you can do bad things with it. Yeah. Doesn't mean all of it's bad. It's mm, right. Simple process of thinking. I'm going to get on a rant. Okay, continuing on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ranting about this. But um, actually, yeah, that's all my questions. Okay. Well, did you have any final, final things you wanted to say, talk about? No, man. Y'all just, you know, we can find my OnlyFans. I sell feet pics. So if y'all are into that. Do you actually sell feet pics? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, is that actually viable? <laughs> I mean, it is though. Not for me. You know, I just, I don't, mm. I don't think my feet look womanly enough, but there, there are accounts out there that are just selling feet pics and probably making a decent amount of money. So any ladies out there listening, you don't want to show your face, but you want some extra money. People will buy you feet pics. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's badass that you can make money that way. Uh, maybe I should just try. I mean, my feet aren't bad. Maybe I can, you know, trick at least five people into giving me like $20 a month or something. You could you could just do some Photoshop. Yeah, you know. Just have an interesting background. So many ways. <laughs> and just end it yeah. by, you go like six months down the line and the, the last post is just your face. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is who y'all been buying feet pics from, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord well what are your what are your socials where can people find you uh at majentage on just about everything twitter youtube instagram all those things that i don't really use uh twitch you always find me on twitch you stream every day? i try and stream every day but again i don't have a schedule so don't don't fucking come for me Alright, you'll see me when you see me, Dan. Just hit the follow button, hit the, hit the bell <laughs> notification. You, you'll there you go. Just like my YouTube schedule, you'll see it when you see it. Exactly. <laughs> just like, uh, I'm so bad. Alright, guys, well, if y'all uh, want to check out more of Majin. I just had a brain fart. Majin Taj, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Um, you got it. All the links to his socials and Twitch will be in the description down below. If you want to check out the episode one, that's also down in the description below. And if you guys have any suggestions of who you'd like to be on the podcast, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you have any questions for Majin, leave it down in the comment below or tweet them. Either way, I'll let them know. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for coming to the I Am A Professional, I Swear podcast. Until next time, I don't have an outro. Peace. Peace.